Inspired by the Paladin on Foot revealed at Warhammer Fest, I wanted to paint something similar. For this tutorial, I'll be talking about true metallic metals, red and black. If you find the content useful, make sure to subscribe. I've been posting videos every 6 days since the beginning of the year and I plan to continue till the end of it. I left the model unassembled to make it easy to apply the base coat. As mentioned in my last video, when working on raised details, remember to remove the excess paint from your brush and to work not with the tip of your brush in a stabbing motion, but with the side of the brush in order to make it harder to make mistakes. Also, while I did freehand the shield, you can always help yourself with masking tape. I stick it to my hand two times to remove some of the glue, in order to avoid leaving some of it behind or pulling up the paint. After applying the base colors, I stuck the model together. I won't be bothering highlighting anything I can't comfortably reach. For the armor, I began by helping some heavily diluted black paint pull on the recesses to create shadows. Feel free to use any type of washes if you have already, I'll stick to my normal acrylics plus water. To highlight it, I remove the excess paint from my brush and focus on everything that is facing up and the edges. You can see clearly how I only work on the top half of the knee and leave the bottom as it is. For all the edges, I work with the side of the brush as I have mentioned before. There was not a lot of gold in this model, but after darkening it with diluted black and brown, I lightened it back up with just one pass of the base color again. Even on this tiny detail, using the side of the brush helps me avoid any mistakes. If you find your highlights overpower your shadows too much, you can always do another pass of diluted paint to smooth it up. Whole red and flat red was used to paint the red parts of the cloak. If you paint red starting from mid as your base color, when highlighting you will either move towards pink if you use white or orange if you use yellow. That's why, if you're looking for a pure red finish, it is better to begin dark, like with brown as I have done here, or even purple for a colder feeling, and move towards your chosen red color. I want to know that while we would normally highlight these creases here like so, I'll be leaving that for my final red highlight. Being such a small detail, there is no point in wasting time with transitions, especially if you're planning to paint multiple of this. Same here. I work these folds as a whole thing and only bring the separation with my pure final red. For the black parts, I used grey-green to highlight. The green tinting will add a touch of contrast against the red. This is me going into fine details. Feel free to use a normal grey if that's what you have. 
I explained the process of painting black on a previous video. If you want more info on that, here's the link. But what I'm basically doing is slowly adding more and more grey green to the mix. Once I see that I've gone too far with the grey, I tune everything down through a filter of heavily diluted black paint. I don't let any of the paint pull anywhere. I just want an even coat all over to blend the grey and push it back towards black. While optional, I did decide to push the armor a step further with white aluminum. As always, removing the excess and being very selective about this highlight. Only a touch here and there on the upper facing parts, staying within the previous highlighted area and leaving some of it behind. After applying the basing, I was left with this. If you are excited for the return of the old world, stay tuned because there is more to come. I'll see you again next week where we'll be looking at where to place lights and shadows.